Leak Code 133, Clone Graph in JavaScript. It's a medium problem with many downvotes. I'm going to explain it, diagram it, and show you how the code works. If you're a fan of recursion, you'll probably enjoy this video. Let's get into it. Given a node in a connected undirected graph, return a deep copy of that node. The node is going to match this interface. There's a val property, which is a number, and an array of neighbors, nodes. The input that we're given is a little confusing. So in addition to this kind of strange wording up above, they're showing the input as an array. So it almost seems like we might just make a deep copy of that array. It's not what is wanted at all. Very far from it. What we are given is a node object. We're given a node object. And that node is, as discussed, has a val property and a neighbor's property. This array representation shows the one based array. It's an abstraction of what that graph, of all the nodes in that graph, could be represented as. So the first node in that graph, we have index zero here. Since it's supposed to be one based, we'll have the val property as one. And then it will have two neighbors, each neighbor having the val two and four respectively. The next node has val two, the neighbors are one and three. Three has neighbors two and four, four has neighbors one and three. Two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three. Two, four, one, three a pattern there. This is shown in example one, image depiction. We have node one. We're given that node as our input. That node has val one, neighbors two and four. So it's val one because it's index zero plus one. The val is one. It's implied by its index. So we're given that object as our reference. So the first thing we're going to do is clone that node and then clone its neighbors. So if you think about that, we clone this, we create a new node object using a node constructor, set its val property to one, and then it set its neighbors, and then we'll have to loop through the neighbors of the old node, two and four, and create new neighbors for it. And so we create nodes for two, we create a node for two first, it's first in the loop, and we'll create uh, a new node for two, and then we'll create neighbors of two, which are one and three. So we already created a node for one. And so in order to track that, we're going to use a, a hash map. We already have that. We're going to keep that tracked in a hash map. So let's look at a new diagram here. This diagram we're going to start with node number one. And this is the same representation down here. This is the node. It has two and four. And that's going to be represented in this hash table over here with this constructor new node being implied for every array in there. So for every item we put in there, we're just going to say that that's going to be a new node. And we're going to store its key here and then its value as the new node over here. The key is going to be the val. That's because val is unique. So we start out here with node number one. We're given that node. We're going to clone that. We're going to take that node. We're going to look in the array, or in our map, and get a thicker one here. It's not there. So we're going to put it there. We're going to put one there. Now we have a key one. We're going to clone the neighbors. The first neighbor we're going to clone is two. So we've started one. We've put that in the map. We're going to clone two. Two is not in the map. So we're going to have to put two in the map. So we put two in the map. And we've already started to... Uh, We've already started to clone 
number two. So we're just going to put that as a little memento here for what we're going to come back to later. Put a little two there. And for two, we've already started it. We're going to have to come back and we're going to have to finish that off. So we started on two. We're not done. So this is not even a completed node yet. So we started on two, but we have to create a new entry in the map. Two, we're going to look to clone its neighbors one and three. So we're going to look in the map and right away we can see that two does have a neighbor here right up above it. It's got one in the map. So two is going to take as its values. It's going to take one. We're going to put that in there because it's already there. And then the next thing we have in there is three. Well, three is not done yet. So we don't have that in the map yet. So we're going to take three and we're going to put, we're going to put orange here just to make a little uh, memo of what we're going to have to come back later to finish. And we're on that one. That's just like a sketched in for our own memory. This is not part of the program data yet. And we're going to put three in our map. So three is now the node we're on cloning. So three, we're cloning three. Three's in our map. We're, we've got a clone of three. We just don't have its neighbors done yet. We're going to neighbors are two and four. Two is already in the map. Okay, so that one's done. Okay, two's in the map. Next neighbor is four. Four is not in the map yet. So we're going to put four in the map and sketch in that four over here. So now we started on four, but we haven't finished four. We gotta we gotta do its neighbors. Look to the neighbors three and one. Neighbor one is already in the map. That's done. And neighbor three is already in the map. So four is done. Okay, so now we've completed four. Now four is done. Now three is done. So we go back to this call in the call stack. Now two is done. So we can go back to here. We're not still finished, we're not finished with one yet. One's remaining neighbor is four. So we have to check to see if four is in the map. It is. We put four in the map. We're done with one's neighbors. That means we're done with the algorithm and that means we're going to return this new node with neighbors two and four. So it's a new node with new neighbors two and four. And we know that we're all done with everything now. And that's what we return. So we see that we have recursion in this. And we have a hash table to prevent infinite recursion. And we have a loop that's inside of there looping through each neighbors, each of the neighbors for each node. Now let's get into the code. We have a shell function here, clone graph. And that's our driver for the recursive clone function. In strict mode, if the node is null or undefined, we return null. We get the constructor property off of that element. That's going to be on the prototype chain. That it's going to be on um, whatever you use to construct it. This is the prototype. It's going to have a constructor property, and we'll find that at the prototype chain. And we're going to use that to construct new node elements. Create a map. That's going to be what I was calling a hash map over here. And then we have our recursive function here, our clone function. But we're going to call that, and then we're going to return the value that it returns. And that's going to clone that node, that root node that we're passed. And that root node that we're passed is going to be cloned and then returned. And in that recursive function, we are going to clone all of the neighbors and the neighbors of the neighbors, and so on and so forth until there are no more neighbors to, to clone, and we return the first one. The clone function takes the root. We get the value is one. We check to see if that's in the map. First iteration, one is not. We create a new node, a new node, a copy of that node, not the same node. We put it in the map first. Now it's in the map. Now we can go through and clone the neighbors. So now this one node is in the map. Now we can clone the two, and we can have that one in the map so that we can check to see if it's in the map. Because if we were to put this right inside this call, we would 
try to set it, we wouldn't be done with this, this expression here. We would first be cloning the two node while well, we weren't yet done with the one node and we would end up in infinite recursion. So we have to have it in this order. We create a new node with a value, put it in the map, then clone the neighbors. So the first neighbor we're going to clone for number one is two. We clone the node two, the source node two, get the value, the number two. Is that in the map? Not yet. So we get a new node, value two, put it in the map, then clone two's neighbors. So we're still not done with one. Now we're on two. Two's neighbors are one and three. We're going to clone the first neighbor of two. Now let's go over this statement right here, though. I kind of glazed over this. Root.neighbors.map clone. Root.neighbors.map clone. So map.prototype, or sorry, array.prototype.map. We pass it that clone function. And every time that clone function is called, it takes whatever neighbor is being passed to it. So for when we're on root, when we're on node two, which we're on now, we're going to pass it first this one, and then we're going to pass it the three node. So first, now we're on node two, and we're passing it the source node one back into that clone function. Clone function is being called the source node one. We get the value is one. We check to see if it's not in the map. Well, it is in the map. So we're just going to return it and we're not going to clone it. It's already there. We avoided infinite recursion. Okay, so now in our second call, clone with node three, source node, we call clone. We get the value three off the val. We check to see if it's in the map. It's not in the map. So we create a new node add it to the map, and then clone three's neighbors. Now we're on three. So we created a new node. Now we're cloning three's neighbors, which are two and four. So we're gonna clone two and four in this array.prototype.map call. Clone is being called on this node. The value is two. So we call clone with two. Get the V is V is going to be two. That's already in the map. So we're just gonna return it. And then we're gonna get four. Okay, so now we're going to cl call clone with source node four. So we call clone with four. V is four. It's not in the map. Clone map dot has V is false. Therefore, we're going to create a new node, val four. We're going to add it to our map. We're going to clone four's neighbors. Now we're cloning four's neighbors. Four's neighbors are one and three. So we clone one. Call a clone with one. We already know that the value is one. It's already in the map, so we're just going to return it. And the same thing is true with three, because we already added it to the map. So when we call clone with the source node three, we get the value, check to see if it's in the map. It is, so we just return three. So four is done. So now we're back on this call to three. On three, we had neighbors two and four. Okay, so we already we already did, uh, we did three and four. So now three, so four is done. So now we've, we've finished cloning the four. So now we're gonna return that. And get returns whatever was in the map. So we're gonna return that four node. Okay, so now we're done with cloning three. So now three can be returned. Now we return whatever's called with get to three. That goes to node two. So two, remember cloned had to call clone on the neighbors one and three, and we had already one there. So three is being returned to two, and now two is filled in with three. And then we return that, and then we go all the way back to root node one, and we only cloned, called root.neighbors.map, we only cloned the first neighbor in that. Because remember that sent us on a recursive chain to cloning the neighbors of the neighbors. The neighbors of one, the first neighbor had to clone two, then they had to clone, they had to clone, second neighbor had to clone three, which had to clone the second neighbor four, which then we returned, we returned, and now we're back here, we have to clone the second neighbor of one, which is four. So clone on source node four, V is four, it is in the map, so we're just gonna return four, and then we're done. So we're returning that to one so now we have one's neighbors finished and now we're going to finally return the cloned node for one 
So we finished that call to clone on four. Now we finished that call to clone on one. And the return for that is the cloned node one with all of its neighbors cloned. And that's returned here in line 25. If there's anything confusing about my diagrams, I hope they help. But this is uh, something I'd like to get better at. So please let me know if you enjoyed this video and what you would think could make it better. And thank you for watching.